Hello and good day. This is Lawrence De Camora of Silicon Valley High School. And in this video tutorial, we will discuss different ways on how to implement event handling techniques. So there are four different ways on how to do this. In our previous video, in video number five, we've implemented event handling techniques using a separate class. Meaning, the GUI, as you see in this code, is saved in a single Java source code. So, this Java source code is all about the UI components and containers. While the event handlers are located in a separate file. So, in this video, let me close this. We will try to do... The, different, the other ways on how to, to perform event handling techniques like writing the event handlers within the same class and using inner classes to implement event handling techniques. Okay, let me do the second one. So in this example, I've created a, class, a test class and if you notice, I have two import statements. The first import statement is for my... GUI components and for the second import statements are for my event handlers Okay, so I have a class public class test class and I will implement an action listener because I will just create a button That I will click So in this sample code, I will create a frame private frame F and a button very simple let me create a constructor, public test class. And inside my constructor, I will instantiate both components. New frame, say test event class. And then my button. Let's say this button will be used to close the application. So I'll type here, close me. All right. I will create our PSVM, public static void main method, string args. All right, and then I'll say test class, tc is equal to new test class. All right, so what we did was we've declared our components and container, a button and a frame, instantiated both of them. The next step is for us to assemble put my button inside the frame so i will have an assembly method here public void launch frame i won't be using any layout manager so maybe use the default so no need to set the layout i'll just say f dot add going to add my button add the button to the frame all right what else? The size, I'll use f.pack and f.setVisible. Set the visibility to true. So this is your UI. Since we've implemented our action listener, which is an interface, we need to go to our API to check what method we're supposed to override. So when you implement the action listener according to the API, we're supposed to override void action performed which accepts an action event. So let me copy that and then I'll type it here. So this will be our event handlers. handlers. Okay, I'll declare it as public public void action listener so after overriding action listener you can now dictate what would you like to do if the button is being pressed i'll just terminate the application because the button's name is close me since we wanted to close the application if you click that button we will do system.exit0 um, call inside our event handler system.exit is a way to terminate the virtual machine normally. Zero is an exit status. Zero means normal termination. 
So let's do that. Let's try to save it. Okay. So after creating your event handler, the next step is for us to register it. So register our event handler. In the previous video, we mentioned that no matter how good your event handlers are, if you don't register them, they will be rendered useless. So we need to register them to our button. So I'll say button and then add. And then we will concatenate the name of the interface that we've used. So since we're using Action Listener, I'll just copy it here and then I'll say add Action Listener. All right. Now, in our previous video, our event handlers are located in a separate file. But since our event handlers right now are within the same file, we need to pass the keyword this. Okay, so let's try to save this and compile this test class dot Java. Here we go, test class. So when we run this, here's our hey, where's our UI? Oops, what happened? Oh, we haven't called launch frame yet. So I'll say tc dot launch frame. We forgot to call the method. Okay, let's make this larger. Compile this again, and then run. All right, there we go. So here's our button inside the frame. So if I click on close me, there you go. Okay, the, the GUI component closed. So there are other ways to close an application. Another way is by clicking on out or typing in Alt F4 or clicking on the close button for Mac. For Windows, you can use Alt F4 or for Mac, you can use Command Q. So how do we write another event handler here? So for now, I'll just close it using the close button that we created. What we did so far is we've created an event handler within the same class. We can actually combine it with another way to implement event handling techniques by writing a class within the class or also known as an inner class. So what I'll do is I will create another class since this class will only be used within the class test class. I'll declare it as private. Private class, I'll give it a name, my close button handler now whenever you wanted to close a frame you can either use a window listener since window listeners are interfaces it means you need to override all seven methods now that's a lot but Closing a frame will only need an implementation from window closing. So another alternative is instead of using a window listener, you may want to use the adapter class version. There is a corresponding class called window adapter. So window listener, window adapter. The suffix changes. Okay, if the name of the class ends with the word adapter, it is an abstract class. So abstract class window adapter, which means we extends, we use the keyword extends. Now, the nice thing about window adapters or adapter classes is you only need to override the method that you need. So if I only need an implementation for window closing, I just need to override this method. The rest of the method, I don't need to um, write any codes for them. Of course, um, if we extend the window, window adapter abstract class, we cannot extend anything else. Uh, okay, wrong spelling, extends, okay. So based on single inheritance rule of Java, once you've extended something, you cannot extend anything else. So that's where you um, practice your good judgment. Either you will implement a listener class, uh, a listener interface, or you will extend an adapter or an abstract class. If you extend it, your code can be shorter. 
If you extend an adapter class, your code can be shorter. But if you implement listeners, the nice thing about implementing listeners is you can still extend other classes in the future. And the downside is you need to write a bunch of codes because you need to override all methods inside them. So let's try to override public void window closing, okay, which accepts a window event. Okay, so this is the method that is being triggered every time we press Alt F4 or whenever you close the frame. So what we would like to do is to um, terminate the virtual machine system dot system system dot exit zero, and then after writing our event handler, the next step is for us to register it. But this time we will not register it to a button. Instead, we will register it to a frame. We say add, and then since we've extended window adapter, we'll use add window, but not the word adapter. We will still use the suffix listener. There's no such thing as add window adapter. What we have is add window listener. So this is the method that we will use to register our inner class as another event handler. Since it is a different class, we need to pass the instance of that class. So we'll say new my close button handler constructor call. So this is the name of the class, which means this is the name of the constructor. So when we save that, and we recompile our code, and we run our code, so you have a frame, and when I click on the close button, there you go. Your application also closes. Or if I press, if I press Control Q for Mac, the equivalent is Alt F4 in Windows. It will also close. So you can you have uh, you can also close this using the close button. So in this sample code, we have shown you. Um, two different ways on how to implement event handling techniques. One is by using um, a class or an event handling technique within the same class by implementing a listener, just like what we did here, implements action listener. And another way is by writing a class within a class. So this is what we did. We've written another class inside an, a class, class test class. I have an inner class here, private class, my close button handler. Okay, so in closing, um, there are different ways on how to do event handling techniques. You can write your GUI application from one class and write the event handling in a different class. That's what we did last time. And in our current code, we've implemented an interface, so which means you can also implement or you can provide an event handling technique within the same class. Your clue here is your import statement. In your import statement, you have AWT package and AWT event packages that are imported, which means in this sample code, you have uh, GUI codes and event handling codes. And um, the nice thing, okay, I, one point that I need to emphasize is the nice thing about using listeners or implementing listeners is you can implement multiple listeners. Of course, it will always be uh, good if you have your API documentation with you so that when you implement a certain listener, you will know what type of method or methods you're supposed to override. So if you implement action listener, you're supposed to override action performed. Let's say you implemented item listener. You need to override only one method as well called item state change. Okay, so there's a bunch of listeners right here in the API that you can check out later okay, on your free time. Well, item listener, by the way, is a, is a listener that you can implement if you have checkboxes or radio buttons, something that you... Uh, select you know, as, as your um, component. No? 
So for if you have uh, check boxes, uh, radio buttons, uh, item listener is the listener that you need to implement. And you need to override item state change. Another thing that it's worth mentioning, you can, you are, or you are allowed to implement multiple listeners. So we'll try to look at another example on how to implement multiple listeners in our next sample code. But before we end this, okay, like what I've said, another way to implement event handling technique is by creating an inner class. A class called my button handler in this example can be declared and um, called within the outer class. So how do you, how did we call that? We said f dot add window listener and then we've instantiated the object new my button handler. Okay, so of course when you register it, you use the listener version, no? add and then the, the listener version of your window. That's why we use window listener and did not use window adapter. Okay, so that's it for now. I hope you've uh, you can try this code as well. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. Happy coding!